Hi kids, and in this part of the chapter, we will be looking at animal life. Now we all know that animals live in many different surroundings. They are found in forests, they are found in rivers, they are found in seas, ponds, deserts, mountains, snow covered regions and they are even found in air. Apart from that, even if you look around your house, you will find animals in your house, maybe small insects, maybe birds. So you have animals all around your house. So in this particular chapter, we will be looking more in detail about animals and various different characteristics of animals. Now, the surroundings in which an animal lives is called as a habitat, okay? So, if the animal lives in or around your house, your house will be the habitat of that particular animal. And animals have various body features that help them survive in their habitat. Suppose you take a polar bear, for example, if it has to survive in snow, it has so much fur covered all over its body, right? That is the different body features that helps the polar bear survive in the snow. Then we know that animals come in various different shapes and sizes. We have animals as small as amoeba, which cannot be seen with the naked eye. You need to use a microscope to see amoeba. And we have the hugest animal on earth, which is the blue whale, which is many, many times the size of an elephant. So you can see how animals range even in their size, starting from a microorganism up to the largest animal alive. Now, in this chapter, let us see what all we'll be studying. We'll be studying about the different body coverings. We'll be studying the different eating habitats of animals. We'll be looking at different methods of breeding that animals use. We will be looking at the various ways in which animals move. And lastly, we will be looking at what is migration and how animals travel very long distances. Let's start with the first one, which is different body coverings. Now, when you look at different body coverings, can you think of what all could be the different body coverings that animals have? The first one would be feathers. Can you think of anything that can have feathers? Yeah, it's obviously the birds. Birds will have feathers. So, first type of body covering is feathers. The second one is scales. Can you think of which animals would have scales? Now scales are mainly seen in fishes and they are seen in reptiles. If you see in fishes, the scales will be very thin. Okay, like this fish will have very thin scales. Whereas reptiles like your lizards and crocodiles will have very hard and leathery scales. Okay, so scales is the second one. The third one is shell third kind of body covering. Now shell is a hard outer covering. It protects the animal within itself. So examples for this will be snail, will be turtles and tortoises. If you see this is snail, this is turtle and this is tortoise. Now how do you differentiate between turtle and tortoise? Turtles live in water whereas tortoise live on land. So that is the difference between turtles and tortoises. The next one is fur. So the fourth one is fur. Which is the animal that has fur? It is polar bear. So polar bear has fur. You can see it is very thickly covered fur. Fur is nothing but hair, okay, which all mammals have. For example, a lion. You can see how majestic the mane on the lion looks, right? So that is nothing but hair. Now in mammals, apart from hair, some of them are categorized as fur. For that, the example would be the polar bear. Now let us look at the various eating habits of animals. If you see the first eating habits, we'll be looking at animals that eat only plants. So the animals that eat only plants are called as herbivores. For this, the examples would be cow, sheep, goat, zebra and horse. So we have all the animals right here for you to know. And if you look at them, their body parts are also adapted for the kind of food that they eat. If you see herbivores, for example, they have very sharp front teeth so that they can cut and bite grass and leaves and other plants, whereas they have very flat back teeth that helps them grinding this food. So this is about herbivores. Let's look at the next one. If there should be animals that eat plants, there will be animals that eat other animals. So let us look at what they are called. So the second one is carnivores. So animals that eat other animals are called as carnivores. For this, the examples would be 
we have lion, we have wolf, we have a frog, we have snake and we have the owl and not to forget the eagle. All of these are carnivores and they will eat other animals. Now if you look at how their body is adapted, if you take examples like lion and tiger and other animals, they will have very pointy front teeth. You've seen the tiger's teeth, right? They're very sharp. So this helps them tearing the food and they have very, very strong back teeth that helps them to chew the flesh. Whereas if you look at birds like the eagle and the owl, they have very sharp claws. Claws are their feet, so they'll have very sharp nails that help them to catch smaller animals. And they will have very, very sharp beak, which helps them to tear the flesh of that animal which they catch. So this is about carnivores. So we've seen animals that eat plants. We've seen animals that eat other animals. Now let us look at certain animals that eat both. So these are called as omnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants as well as animals. If you see the example, they are ducks, humans as well as bears. So these guys, the teeth is adapted in such a way that they can eat both plants as well as animals. So this is omnivore. So we have animals that eat just plants which are called as herbivores. We have animals that eat other animals which is called as carnivores. And we have animals that eat both plants and animals which is called as the omnivore. Let's move on to the next one. We'll be studying about the various methods of breathing that these animals will use. Now, in order to stay alive, animals need to breathe continuously, right? Oxygen has to be taken in during breathing and carbon dioxide is given out. Now, different animals use different methods of breathing. The first one we will be studying is breathing through the lungs. So, can you think of which animal would breathe through the lungs? Yes, it is mammals, birds and reptiles. They all have generally two lungs which are connected by the breathing tube. You can see here this is the connecting breathing tube which will lead to a tube called as the nostrils. These are the nostrils so this will lead here. This is nostril. Now if you see nostril these are two holes which help in connecting to the breathing tube which leads to the lungs so without the nostrils on your nose the two holes in your nose you won't be able to breathe comfortably this is easier way of breathing the second method is through moist skin okay there are some animals which use moist skin to breathe like the earthworm and frog when it is in water when the frog is on land it generally breathes with the help of lungs but when the frog is in water it uses its skin to breathe so we have the earthworm right here and we have the frog here. The third method of breathing is with the help of spiracles. Now what are spiracles? Spiracles are exclusively seen only in insects. Okay. Now these spiracles are small holes which are found on the, both the sides of the body. So there will be small tiny holes which allows the air to enter and it reaches all the body parts through breathing tubes. So insects, please remember, they breathe with the help of spiracles. The fourth one is through gills. So this is the last method of breathing called gills. Gills help in breathing under water. Okay, so this gills help in taking dissolved oxygen which is present in water. Which are the animals that use gills? They are fish, tadpoles, prawns and others which live in water. So we have all of them here. This is the tadpole, this is prawn and we have fish. These three animals breathe with the help of gills underwater. So with this we complete part one of the chapter and the next part we will look at how different animals move differently and a little about migration. If you like the video, please hit the like button, please share it and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.